the fight would be. There was no roadmap to know how we were going to do it. But I knew what the right thing to do was. And that was to stand up and advocate and fight for Scotty every single day. And I would walk into his room and speak truth, hope, and life. And I made him a commitment that I would always be the person that told him everything he could do versus everything he was hearing. I was being asked to find long-term care facilities for him. I was also brought into a room with a VA official, medical official, um, the, the head doctor of Scotty's case. Said, so, Mrs. Smiley, you have power of attorney. Your husband is completely blind. He's in a coma. Sign right here on the dotted line, and let's begin his medical retirement from the military. I looked at them, and I said, no, I'm not signing it. I don't know if any of you have nurses in your life, but nurses are the staunchest advocates. We do not take no for an answer, and we stand up and fight for everything that's right. We find solutions. That's our career. So I said no because I believe Scotty should have opportunity, access to all the care that he should need to fully recover and live a purposeful life. And that he should not be retired until all of that was achieved. Mm -hmm. And if he still wanted to serve and give back to our country, that he should be afforded that. So I said no. The doctor looked at me confused. He said, I don't think you understand, Mrs. Smiley. Your husband is completely blind. He lost both of his eyes, completely inoculated. He said, he's completely blind. There has never been someone to continue service to our country blind. Sign the paperwork. So I looked at him a second time, and I said, no, I'm not signing it. You see, I was able to be a voice for Scotty when he didn't have one. Not only that, we were standing up for thousands of families like ours during that time. And I'll never forget this moment in Walter Reed where, where I cried for the first time. I crumpled on the floor in a heap and sobbed. You, you can imagine as a nurse, you, you want to help everyone. We were seeing some of the most, ca you know, highest levels of casualty that our country's ever seen. We were well into Afghanistan and Iraq and the, the fighting was so heavy. So every day there were families coming in. These are catastrophic injuries. You can't make up some of these. And I would walk by rooms and, and see soldiers who have served sitting alone. And I cried and cried and cried because I wanted to help. I knew I could help Scotty. That was certain. And I made a promise to myself that someday I would come back and help everyone else. Mm -hmm. And so I built a coalition. I started calling generals. I started calling colonels. I, I started talking to every person that would listen to me in our circle. And I said, I believe in this vision of something better for Scotty. You know, that if he wants to still serve, that he could serve. So I built a coalition who believed in that vision as well. And I'm so honored and proud to say that Scotty, my amazing husband, went on to fully recover and stayed by him every day. You know, bad days, good days, a few steps backwards some days, a few steps forward other days. He went on to a miraculous recovery. He would never gain his eyesight back. But we petitioned the Army, and he became the first blind active duty officer to continue service wow. to our country. Wow. Something I've never been done before. We served our country for a whole other decade with him blind. We moved eight times in ten years. All three of our beautiful sons are born in different cities all across the United States. Um, I went from a nurse to an entrepreneur. I built a national speaking business where my husband and I started to speak and share our story anywhere we could to make an impact. Mm -hmm. And I would use those resources in that time to advocate that, that promise I made to myself and Walter Reed. And I would go to Capitol Hill and I would take meetings with anyone that would take a meeting with me. And at one point, one legislator said, who's funding you? How do you keep showing up here? <laughs> and I, was, I was annoying. I was always showing up. And I always had questions and I always had ways we could be doing it better. I said, who's funding me? It's our family's own American dream that we're rebuilding. I'm here to make change. You know, no one's funding me, and I think we've just come to a place in our country where <laughs> career politicians have just become so established that they just listen to special interests instead of what's right for the American people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I saw that. I saw behind that curtain. After Scotty had served, you know, for a whole decade, we came up to the VA system, another bureaucrat system. 
and he was given a stack of paperwork about this high. And, you know, he's blind. So he would have to scan every single word. And if you, you know, submit C before A, then you're disqualified from B. <laughs> you know, this is what he was going through, and he was struggling. And, and he actually came to a point where he's like, Timmy, I don't even want to bother with it. I want to move on with my life. This is so taxing. And when he called to ask for help, they said, well, don't you have a wife who can fill that out for you? So I got on the phone and went through our agreements. And, and they said, oh, Mrs. Smiley, this process is so complicated that you have to hire a lawyer to navigate it. And that's where I said, that's so unacceptable. You know, because if we're feeling this, there's thousands of others that are feeling this as well. And so, you know, people warned me, Tiffany, don't take on the VA. You will not change anything. Don't bother. It's not worth your time. You're going to waste your time. I heard it all. But I'm still proud to say that we took VA reform and legislation all the way from Pasco, Washington, to the Oval Office in Washington, D.C., where I briefed President Trump and worked with him on legislation that directly impacts injured veterans and their families.